The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Alan Blumkin. I'm here with my good friend David Nemec in another uh, podcast about baseball and history, history and trivia. Welcome, David. Welcome, Al. It's a pleasure to be with you once again. Same here. Okay, uh, we're going to discuss uh, the ramifications of the current playoffs and uh, possibly what is going to, it's going to be like next year, assuming there's a full season. So, yeah, yeah I, I've watched some of it. I watched the uh, A's yesterday. And I well, watched, I a, yeah, I watched part of that game, too. That was an interesting game. It yeah. Probably. Because uh, I didn't uh, see them. Yeah, let me... Yeah, you don't. You don't. Yeah. Living in the, you're living on the East Coast. I get a lot of them. I'm on the West Coast, so I do get some of their their games, particularly with the Angels and uh, and the Dodgers. And but uh, so I, you know, I haven't seen many. I haven't. Seen, I have no clue what the Marlins are like. Uh, you know, I, I saw about two innings that first game, and uh, I couldn't tell you five players on that team. I don't two think players I even. Yeah, I know. And uh, what's ironic about this whole thing is that uh, the Marlins and the uh, Rays have the lowest payrolls in uh, baseball, and that they're 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 in there. And a team like the Phillies that don't that ha- spend a fortune don't have any uh, not in there at all. So the Braves are down there now among the lower te- lower paying teams. No, the Braves are in. I mean, I mean, you, you the, said the one Dodgers, of their, the, the, the the Braves beat Cincinnati yesterday. Yeah, I, I know, but you said they, their their payroll now is among the lower. No, I said I, I said Rays. Oh, Rays. Rays. Yeah, I yeah. should have said Tampa. Oh, okay. oh definitely. Yeah, but yeah. Well, two, yeah, I'm I'm rooting for two Florida teams to make it to the series. I think that would be really fascinating under the circumstances. And some way, yeah. so, some would say if they make it that far. There'll be nobody there, no fans there, and says they used to they used to playing before, they used to crowd that's, you know nine crowds like that. That's why that's why they're doing so well. They used to play yeah. in front of no fans. <laughs> but uh, 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 the Reds just well, you don't score in twenty two weddings, you lose. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. The, yeah, it's interesting because the AL, AL, both the AL and the N and the NL sent three teams from the Central Division to the playoffs, and and they may come out of it with all all six of them. All yeah, all three of them are Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's and uh, the re- first Reds Braves game went thirteen innings and was uh, one nothing, even though. Uh, they had uh, four extra innings. They started with runners on second base. I don't know how they could have had. I would. I would have had to be. I wish I'd been there to see it. Because that that to me is the most fascinating development of anything that uh, so far in the playoffs. And uh, I'm sorry I missed it. Yeah, I hate this that rule. I do too. And I yeah. really, you know, among the rules that they put in this year, uh, some of them ten- tentatively for one year only. That is definitely one that I hope is is uh, scrapped immediately because you know extra inning baseball is just part of the game. It's like it's like sudden death. It's like extra, you know, playoff football. You know, yeah. And, and it, uh, you know, it, it, and the extra inning in baseball is is you know it's, it really is an extension of the game. The football that bulls change in in sudden death and in, in hockey they change. Basketball and baseball are the only. No, well, basketball they play a shortened, uh, shortened overtime. But baseball they play just a, a regular inning, and it go, just keeps going on and on and on, up to twenty six innings in nineteen twenty between the Braves and the and the Dodgers. Well, and, pro uh, football reduced uh, their overtime from fifteen minutes to ten minutes. Oh, they have. I didn't yeah, realize yeah, that this year, and uh, uh, the. Uh, Team that scores basically scores the first first uh, touchdown. You know, wins it, and they have each team has to get the ball once, 
if you kick a field goal, the other team has a chance to uh, go down and try to tie you up or get ahead of you. And they had a, they had a tie game between uh, uh, the Eagles and the Bengals last uh, Sunday. Was they it went a tie? Through, I the yeah, Bengals, but the Bengals won. No, it was a tie, 23 all tie. 23 all tie? I didn't yeah. know that. I thought, I yeah. thought the Bengals won. And huh. uh, So they each kicked the field goal in overtime, and that that was... No, I think they, they, neither of them scored in the overtime. Neither, neither of them scored. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, I, haven't, but, yeah, I, haven't, I really have, I have to admit I haven't watched uh, any of the NFL yet this year. So, I, yeah. I don't, uh, well, the only... Uh, t- one of the teams I, I find worth watching is Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback of Kansas City. He is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I well, I, I only I only turned in the Super Bowl last year in the fourth quarter, and uh, the, the Chiefs were out of it. I thought toward the end of the third quarter, and it looked to me like you know, the Forty Nine ers were going to win it going away. And, yeah, he was very impressive. To say yeah, that. and uh, we have a two. Maybe the two worst teams in the league here, the Jets and the Giants. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't watch them. I refuse to watch, you know, watch any of that. So, anyway, getting back to baseball, uh, Kershaw, of course, pitched brilliantly for eight innings, gave up, uh, I think it was two or three hits, walked one, one struck out 13, and wow. it threw 93 pitches. And they pull him out for the night. He doesn't let him, they don't let him go out for the night. Then and some relief pitcher I never heard of got through the inning and got credit for a save because he came oh. in with he came in with a three. Yeah. What? Yeah, I don't know why they pulled him. If he only had ninety three pitches, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, crazy. Unless he asked, unless he asked to come out. But they all do it this way, and I hate that. The White Sox A's game yesterday had 16 pitchers. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw a lot of that game, and it, I don't know whether the White Sox starter was hurt or what, but it was in the second inning. It was already the third pitcher coming in when I turned it on. And uh, the, the second pitcher apparently had gotten hurt. Uh, I don't, and I don't know these guys. I don't know, their, you know, I don't know their personnel at all. So I don't know who started. But uh, did he get removed? Or because he was injured, or what happened? Did you see the beginning? I don't know, uh, but uh, they wound up using seven pitches by the fifth inning. Yeah, I know, and yeah. you know, it's a winner take all game. So yeah, yeah, they, you know, they, had... they had nine, and the uh, White Sox had seven. Wow, well, it's yeah, but it, it, it was a good game, and I was glad to see the A's win after the game. I know their their big guy got hurt. And then they weren't expected to do much. And they haven't done much in the playoffs in recent years. So, uh, yeah, but I, and the one thing I hadn't been aware of until this year was a, a dismal showing. Uh, um, I guess, does it, it involve the entire 20th century so far that the Twins, or 21st century, the Twins have not won a playoff game? That's or, right. They were right, right up against the Yankees several times. I know. Well, and they were beaten at home three straight by uh, by Houston, yeah. Houston, yeah. That's who Oakland gets in the next round. Yeah. Well, that I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Houston went went to the World Series. Oh God! Uh, I, also, think, uh, yeah, I yeah. think the I think the winner of the Yankees and Tampa Bay is going to wind up going to the World Series. Well, the we'll Yankees. Use, um, Yankees. This is the worst possible team for them to play because they, they beat them two out of ten times this season, and the, the, and the, it's going to be played neutral that they're going to be playing in San Diego. Yeah. Now. So they play the American League uh, Championship Series in San Diego. Where did they play the National League Championship Series? I think they're both going to be played in, uh, in uh, San Diego, in Texas. Oh, Texas for the yeah. National League. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, good, right? yeah, they they're, a, you know, they're both. Yeah. Yeah, or well, maybe they have two games, you know, with, you know, four and seven or whatever. The yeah, hours, but uh, uh, the American League teams are playing in National League ballparks for this. And the American yeah. League teams are playing yeah. in 
uh, National League is playing in the American League, and the uh, American League is playing in the National League. That's, that's one of the few decisions that on the playoff format that I have uh, yeah, uh, approved. And, right? and when they start these series, there's no day off. They play five games. Yeah, they could play up to five games in a row. They play five games straight. Okay. Yeah. So, barring, barring a postponement. And, uh, yeah. Well, I doubt there'll be one in San Diego. And I don't, well, unless Texas gets some kind of sudden hurricane or something. I don't know. Yeah, the World really Series is going to be in Texas. The World Series will be in Texas. Yeah. Who knows what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. Uh, so it'll be in, uh, at, 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 you know, okay, it'll be at the Rangers ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what, I, yeah, I know, I know very little about that part. But they call it Globe Life Field, or Globe Life Stadium, after uh, the insurance company, who I'm sure has the naming rights. Yeah, it's crazy. You could write down the names of all 30 ballparks and ask people to link the team to their park. And uh, I'd I venture to say that 99% of the baseball fans would not get all 30. Because yeah. you just give them the name of the park, and it, it, there's no way you can link. Like Cleveland's playing in progressive field. I, I would never know that if I you know, hadn't happened to see games there. Uh, to see on TV. Otherwise, there's no way of knowing. The other thing is, is I... Uh, I think it was in, when this first started. Uh, we had a Sable, local Sable meeting, and I wrote the trivia. And I put in a question about that. And I got such a bad response that uh, I never <laughs> attempted to use that again. I can see. Yeah. I was going to say. And there were only four at the time the uh, Giants, the A's, the. Uh, uh, San Diego and the uh, Dodge and the Dodgers. The no, Dodgers never four? changed. It was San, I think it was yeah. San Diego, uh, San Francisco, Anaheim, and uh, San Diego. I'm, I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, because it I, wasn't I, worth retaining. Yeah, I know. But I imagine there are people who are surprised that they even got through this season, however short it was. I, I'm surprised, frankly, because especially the way the ragged way it began with the yeah. Marlins and the Cardinals, and you know, and I think the, the, I think the teams that got hit early uh, and had to sit out, sit out actually benefited. Both of them made both the Marlins and the, and the and the Cardinals made the playoffs, and I think you know, a lot of it had to do with playing shortened games. Oh yeah, and double, you know, I think it, it, it saved their pitching. Uh, the Marlins was, are certainly not a very deep team. Uh, they got some talent, but uh, I was very surprised to see that they would make the playoffs. And uh, I'm kind of stunned when I saw they beat the Cubs at uh, at Wrigley. So, um, that, is that when, what time is that game? I think that's on at two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. Yeah, so it's actually because only two o'clock. games oh, yeah. today. That one and the third game for uh, the Cardinals and Padres. Yeah, that yeah that that should be in well actually both games could be very interesting to watch. I might try to get a little of both of them. In yeah, because the American League is through. They don't they don't start these the division uh, series until Monday. Um, that's absolutely yeah, that's when they start insane. Monday. And then they play five straight. Why would they do that? Because, because they don't want to compete with football. <laughs> well, you're not competing with football on Saturday. Yeah, it's college football. Um, Look, oh, you know, if they regard college football as a major threat to Major League Baseball, yeah. they're really in trouble. Yeah, it's, uh, I can understand the NFL, which is the most popular watch on TV, sports watch on TV, but when, when college football is beating out Major League Baseball, we, we know we're in trouble. Yeah, it's basically, that's the way the uh, networks and promoters see it. Yeah. Well, I, I think they would sure. finish ahead of, way of finish ahead of college football, but that's not the way uh, the promoters and advertisers see it. Well, it depends who's on what games they have on. And lo- on the lo- local 
uh, local TV stations with, where the colleges are and Big Ten schools. Big Ten's not even uh, active as yet, but yeah, basically the, the, schools. the uh, uh, ESPN is doing the American League and TBS is doing the National League. Okay. So All even right. though you know, there's a conflict of days, uh, you know, one will be in the afternoon, the other one will be at night. You know, this is why they can uh, get the maximum audience. Yeah, it's uh, well, it, it, baseball's in trouble as far as it, it being a spectator sport. It's just it's ranking down there, and I'm surprised they're not even thinking about maybe they're losing losing viewers to the French Open, which is you know uh, running running matches that are already over and have been decided because of the time difference. I know, yeah. At least out here, they are. Yeah, well, I, I put on the website use. that uh, I, go into the, I have the ESPN app on my iPad. I go into the ESPN app, and at 10 o'clock in the morning, and about half the matches are through, right? Yeah, yeah, and here, by the time I turn it on, they're, I think they're almost all over. Yeah, so, and I, you know, I do turn it on a little in the afternoon. Well, you're, we're five hours. You must be eight hours. We're eight hours, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, they're pretty. I don't. I don't know if they're playing. If they play night matches, I don't. Th- no, they, they don't play night matches. Yeah, the only ones yeah. that play night matches are here. Okay, so that's the only because they uh, charge admission. They, play the... they charge separate admissions. Yeah, I know. I know. That's. Crazy. I had a friend of mine that once went out there because he had night tickets, and the f- some match started. Afternoon match started. Four o'clock and it went on forever. So he finally got in there around eight thirty or so. That's what yeah, they do. Yeah. There's, there's no, uh, you know, and of course they give out a lot of tickets to celebrities. But uh, so the average fan who wants to see this uh, can't go to yeah. Labor Day weekend and can't go. To the finals, yeah, the finals. It, it is sad. Yeah, it's greedy. I used to go when they were in Forest Hills. Oh, I, I went to, to go to, yeah. I went a couple of times to uh, a Flushing, and then they just priced me out of existence. Yeah, Forest Hills I used to be able. To, if I, would, I would go on an opening day, and they'd have matches on every court. Yeah, and you, you, I, I'd never even get into the main stadium. I wouldn't because I, you know, I wouldn't. I, I know I'd get a lousy seat. So I wouldn't. I didn't care about watching Ken Roseball beat some college guy I never heard of in the first round. I wandered around the outer courts and I saw some very interesting guys play. Guys like Torben Ulrich, who was in his 40s then, and Drew McMillan, who had a two-hand backhand and a two-hand forehand, and stuff like stuff that's long gone from from tennis now. Most of these guys are, you know. They're basically the same, you know, same strategies, same strategies, and the same kind of strokes. But then, then you really saw a variety, and I really, I really enjoyed it going out to those opening day matches. I watch the majors, and uh, I'm, sometimes I'm amazed by how hard and far they can hit that ball. I am too. I am too. And I used to think I could go on the court with. And when I watch matches in Four Hills, and, and you know. When they were still playing on grass, I went. I would yeah. go out and I'd see the women playing. I, I think, I, okay, I would go out there and I'd be able to return a few balls. I, w- I wouldn't beat anybody, but I would at least be uh, mildly competitive for here and there. Yeah. But now, I, now what I what I see when I, even in the women's game, I mean these women hit the ball so hard that uh, th- there'd be no way I'd ever even I'd even get to their shots. I mean it's, it's incredible how with the rackets and. Uh, oh. and training and everything, coaching. It's the sport is just you know. We got we go way off topic here. I um, know, I know. What, what do you think of the seven inning games? I think they're horrible. So do I. I. Think, yeah, I think, and I, and I would, that's something that definitely won't keep next year. Uh, I wouldn't think under any circumstances. Although they might like it because it, it shortens the games and and. Uh, Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe, who knows what they're, what's going to bring in the DH in the National League? Oh, I think I that's, gonna that's, a, to that's a given. It the probably game. is. Yeah. It probably is. Because uh, um, I don't know. 
I, you know, the, the fans are getting, I've gotten used to it nationally fans this year and they might just slip it in there and it'll, it'll, and the, and the, and the rules then will be universal for both leagues. It, uh, that might, yeah, I've always thought it was, it was, it was a bad idea to have a, a, a different rule in each league. And even though I don't necessarily like the DH all that much, because it prolongs careers of guys who really aren't ball players anymore. I know, yeah. Just guys who can swing a bat. Johnny Myers could have Johnny Myers yeah, probably still if he's still been alive, he'd still be playing. Yeah. But a guy like David Ortiz is gonna make the Hall of Fame in the first ballot. Well uh, uh, Edgar Martinez. Uh, yeah, well Mar- uh, Martinez at least played third base you know, yeah. for a few years. Even though he wasn't very good. Uh mm-hmm. but he, you know, Ortiz he just gave up you know, you never saw him. The only time you saw him climb the dugout was when he had a bat in his hand. Yeah. Good. It, uh, and, you know, that kind of, that really turned me off. And the the seven inning games for double headers have been used for years in the minors. And because uh, in the old days when I used to get the sporting news, they carried the uh, AAA box scores. Yeah, and that's why I found out that uh, yeah uh, that uh, they they use seven inning games and for double headers. And I was watching some some game earlier that uh, the, the Yankees were in, and they got to the eighth inning as part of a double header. And the announcers start talking about this is an extra inning, and it threw me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievable. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's really unbelievable. Yeah, because yeah, the owners have to be nice to the players because uh, the. the Collective bargaining agreement expires after 2021. Yeah. So I think they'll put in the DH in the National League just so they can get more uh, members. You know, they get they get more guys who will have longer careers, and make a lot of money just coming off off the. And they, they the said top. the uh, Yankees uh, and Indians the other night had played a nine inning game that set a record for the longest time. Oh, I, I, I watched a lot of games. It was a horrible game from my perspective. But, yeah, I know you're... Even there. with the rain delays, it took over four hours. I know. I mm-hmm. know. The rain delays were handled very poorly, and I think that was very really costly, from a, especially from a Cleveland perspective. Because, you know, Carrasco uh, really lost it by about the third or fourth inning. I think he only went... I was at the third inning, I think, when he got I was at the fourth inning when they got to him. But neither, neither starting pitcher was, was yeah. you know, and had a hand, chance with that. With yeah, that hand blew it for the Indians in the ninth inning the other night. Well, it, uh, Ursula won, this, won, the, won the game for them. Yeah. That, that play, that remarkable, amazing play. And then, it, then, then and after hitting a grand slam homer earlier, and then in the bottom of the ninth, hand came in and and uh, walked the first two guys, and then he missed that, that uh, whatever it was. I don't, I don't know. It's not clear whether it was a chop ball or a humpback liner or what to me, and just muffed it, and they gave the guy a hit. I, I, I don't understand it. But, uh, you know, it was a play, play any pitcher should you know, will make. And then uh, and then a hit went back through the box, and, he, you know, he, he could have, after a good fielding pitcher would have had that. Ball in the back through the box, or, or maybe that I thought, uh, but hand had no chance, no hand in the game is what it really amounted to. Yeah, I, I, I'm in favor of the uh, relief three uh, minimum of three because you know the, the, there are times when the, the pitcher out there retires two guys very easily, first two guys very easily, third guy comes up and. Uh, Bring a relief pitcher because the pitcher uh, and the relief pitch the, and the batter are uh, would be other with the same hands. Yeah, you know, you know, I I, I agree with you. And you know what I think is going to happen? I think there's going to be and it's, it might be gradual, but I think over the next few years you're going to see a, a lesser and lesser each year you see a lesser percentage of left-handers left-handed pitchers in the game. There are so many guys who've made a career out of pitching only to one batter, left-handers. 
they'd come in and face one key left-handed hitter, get him out, and then they'd be removed. Now these guys can't, have got to stay in there for and face three batters, and the chances are that at least one of them is going to be a right-handed hitter. And uh, it's, more of a, it's more of a test, so I don't know. I think lefties uh, will be put at a disadvantage because they've always been tough with you know, left-handed hitters, and that's really how they've made their, made their money, just being able to get out lefties. But we'll see. Yeah, uh, one of the last games that the Yankees play against Tampa, uh, Tampa used a starting lineup of all left-handed hitters. Who was pitching for the Yankees? They started uh, maybe half or, or ten, half. One, one of the right-handers. So they had all the left-handed lineup. Well, the only, are any of their starters lefties? I know their top three starters are all right-handers. I think they're all right-handed. You know, I, I, yeah. I can tell you who was right-handed and left-handed from 60 years ago. I can't tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm that way, too. Yeah. Because yeah, on one of the conferences, the early conferences I went to, uh, it was 1987, there was a guy making a presentation, and he described Rolly Wynn as a right hand, left-hander. So, well, he did that. That's why I knew all of them, yeah. <laughs> I think he was a switch hitter. Uh, yeah. He was pretty. He was a good hitter. He came in with pinch hit. Although as he got later in his career, well, I mean, was a really good hitter. Run, a pitcher. Lemon came up as Lemon. a position player. Yeah, well, he Lemon. did. Yeah, Lemon played center field on opening day, and then fell through his no hitter. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, by '48, Lemon was you know during the rotation with Feller. You know. I was, I was, you know, I found that fascinating. I was, I was a little kid then. And, wow, and I, you know, and I, everybody did. You know, this was a guy who came up as a position player. You know, now he's a twenty-game winner after only two years as a full-time pitcher. Made the game. Yeah, I mean, he won twenty the games five fame. times. Yeah, yeah, made the whole yeah. thing eventually. And uh, I, th- I think that's one of the most remarkable achievements in all of baseball history. The way he made that conversion and so effectively. I don't know that. Anybody except Ruth ever did it, and Ruth had such talent. That regardless of what he did, he was gonna he was gonna be. You knew Ruth was a good pitcher, and you also knew from watching him hit that if they made him a position player, he was gonna be fantastic. So it was no surprise. But in a case like Lemons, I think people were very pleasantly surprised. Another one that they converted, uh, but his numbers are just a little short. Or was Bucky Walters? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Walters is a third baseman, and he really didn't hit. And he was in the playing in the thirties when well, a lot of third basemen still weren't great hitters, but they had to be able to hit at least two seventy or two eighty. And Walters couldn't even do that, so they found you know his arm was useful, and you know they gave him some, you know put him in there, and he could do the job. And he had a good career, he had a yeah. very good career. And uh, the you know it's funny for years when I first started following the greatest third baseman ever was Pie Trainer, and then uh, Eddie Matthews came along. Al Rosen may have uh, developed into that, but he ended his career prematurely because of his hands. Yeah. And then you got the, you got all in one stretch. You've got the, uh, I'm talking a combination of hitting and fielding, not. Fielding like a book, just a feeling like Brooks Robinson. Uh, you got oh, yeah, Blake, yeah, yeah, Mike Brett, Schmidt, Schmidt, Boggs, yeah, just tons of guys. Yeah, you know, Mike Schmidt, Schmidt uh, Wade Boggs, and uh, George Brett. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was interesting because the trainer was made every all century team in the 1950s at third base, almost universal. Every team I saw, I used to see selected by a player or by a, somebody who was an observer of the, general, of the game in general, would always put trainer at third base as best third baseman in the game to that point in history, uh, disregarding guys in the 19th century who I think were better than trainer. And I, but really, when you came right down to it, except for guys like Home Run Baker, there, were nobody, there was really nobody 
who could give Trainer much competition. And Trainer really wasn't all that good. I mean, he, was, he wasn't a terribly effective offensive player. He was a good, good solid defensive player. He hit in three hundreds, but every he was hitting in the three hundreds when uh, at a time when everybody hit in the three hundreds. I know, yeah, that, that time, yeah, yeah. And he, he, you know, you go back and look at look at his overall career, and if, if he had that career today, uh, he would be a marginal, at best, choice for the Hall of Fame. And uh, given you know the, the you know a sheer welter of third baseman that uh, you know. Beltre and you know just you know a lot of guys that, uh, who are probably going to make the Hall of Fame. Some some of them haven't, and even Troy Glouse, guys like that. I mean, if they'd been in the first part of the 20th century, they would have gotten a lot more, a lot more publicity, a lot more attention. And uh, I don't know what I don't know what changed in third base, but it's just, it's just, I always thought it was one of the tougher positions to play in the, in the game, and uh, I was never very good at it. I really you know, it, uh, I was gun shy. Uh, you know, right-handed hit pull here came up. Then, you know, I, I was at the yeah, I was at the uh, first two games of the uh, 1970 World Series. Uh, no, I, I stayed with Al. You know, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was what Brooks Robinson put on a show defensively. That was unbelievable. Well, he was he was unbelievable. He yeah, he was an incredibly good you know third baseman. You know, it was also a very underrated. Great third baseman was uh, Greg Nettles. His I thought I, you know, I think it, yeah. The only thing that keeps Nettles out of the Hall of Fame is his low career batting average. Yeah, I I think he was he was he was a fantastic ball player, a really. A key player on those Yankee teams. Oh, he was definitely. And he's ne- yeah. he never gotten anywhere near the credit that he deserves. Yeah, he offensively, defensively, all around, he was he was a great guy to have on your team. And you know, I was sorry when Cleveland let them let him slip away. That was a terrible trade. The well, Yankees also got shambles from that from yeah, Cleveland. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me anymore. Uh, okay, well, that every, was... every trade Cleveland made in those days was gift gift to somebody. Yeah, they got people like Charlie Spikes in, in return who hit, hit 25, 30 home runs and by like 230. And, and then, you know, that was about it. And, it, uh, yeah, it's crazy what happened in those years. But there's a book that came out about that, uh, Several years ago, by an author named Tri- Terry Pluto, who were called oh. "The Curse of Rocky Calavito." Yeah, yeah, and it, it was much more complex than, than just the trade of Calavito. I know, yeah. Uh, you know, Calavito. I don't know. Somehow, Calavito was never really a winning ball player. Uh, he made, but he, he, he what is? He, he wasn't really. He wasn't as sharp as he needed to be in the game. He didn't do things that uh, little things. Uh, I, mean, I remember in the I, I talked about this before. I don't know. If, I don't think it's ever been with you, but in '59 uh, doubleheader with the White Sox, uh, they had Smith on second base, and then I can't remember who was on third. Maybe Jim Landis. And uh, the game. I think the game was tied, and somebody hit a fairly deep fly ball to right field. And Landis, of course, tagged. And uh, Calavito tried to get him out at the plate and gunned the ball in, and he rainbowed it. And, and not just Landis, but Smith came around and scored right behind him. It was, inc- it was crazy to watch it because Calavito had wow. absolutely no chance, but he had that great arm. And uh, occasionally he would make a, you know, a throw that stunned everybody and, and nail somebody. But, and he, and he, had, he pitched a few times. He had a, he had a great arm until the end of his career. Yeah, well, I, 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 I watched uh, him pitch the Yankees on TV. Yeah, uh, that must and have been he, incredible. And he did very well, and they scored. This is 1968 when nobody was scoring. He, the yeah. Yankees scored five runs in the bottom of an inning that he, he, he was win. credited with the win. Which I think he, 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 I think he's one of the last position players to go into a game like that and get a win. No, I think yeah. he isn't the last. I don't know if anybody's done it. Because they usually mopped up, mopped up. 
Yeah, I and I uh, I always wondered why why the why the Yankees or somebody didn't try to convert. He still had something left. I mean, he wasn't he was no longer a good outfielder. Uh, his bat his bat suffered like everybody else suffered in 1968, but. Uh, he had a, he had the arm, and at least I think he could have stuck around a couple more years. And, and uh, if they had the DH, he probably would have stayed around for a couple more years. And I, 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 it always puzzled me that nobody, nobody really, uh, maybe he didn't want to. I don't know because I don't think anyone's really ever ever talked to him and no, talked about sure. it. At least I've never seen anything about it. And yeah, but he had a, he had a really really fantastic arm. He did. I know that. Yeah. But, he didn't use it as well as he could have. And he's still alive. He's eighty-seven. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I don't, and I never hear anything about him. I never hear, you know, I never see well, him. I never on TV or hear him quoted. Well, or, yeah, he was. Uh, uh, I think he was one of his legs to diabetes or something like that. Yeah, that. that and could be. Uh, he he lives in around Reading, PA. You know, he was. Uh, Born in the Bronx. Yeah, I, I puzzled me. And he never came back. The only time he ever came back to New York after he got out there, because I think he did some mildly time there, uh, was uh, yeah, to play games in the in, in the Yankee Stadium and the Shea Stadium. Yeah, I remember when Cleveland signed him. They made a big deal out of stealing him from from the Yankees because he was right there for the Yankees to. Mm-hmm. Take if they wanted, and he's playing playing in the shadow of Yankee Stadium for all you know. I don't know, but you know, I, I don't think so. I don't think he was that close. But uh, and, uh, yeah, he, did, he he had tremendous potential when he first came up, and he did have some good years, and he really had power, power, powerful arm, powerful bat, uh, oh. just an all around. You know, he, he was a, he was a ball player worth watching. Fine. Yeah, they they. The, the game where he hit uh, four home runs against the Orioles playing in uh, Memorial Stadium Memorial, down there, which yeah. at that point was very, very difficult. I, I think that may have been the, the most un, un, uh, spectacular four home run game yeah. ever because that was such a tough fight. Klein hit four and four at field, but Klein would play, but there was an extra inning game. Uh, and, you know, it's. Uh, so he had a client had an, an edge there, but uh, those four home runs and, and four of which had a deep right field were pretty amazing too. Yeah. But uh, but you know now four home run games are they're kind of ho hum. I mean I don't even I don't even there's been I don't know how many there have been in the last twenty thirty years, but more than I can keep track of. And yeah, uh, I, I have a friend name. of mine. I have a friend of mine was at. Uh, Ebbets Field when Joe Adcock hit the four. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah the, I remember the, the, that. It was a double. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that was a very. Yeah, I remember that too. But yeah, and you know, I never never saw a four home run. Like, I saw a couple of three home runs. You know, yeah, I saw I, I saw three of those. Yeah. Yeah, I saw kind of hit three once. And, uh, uh, yeah, I saw. Uh, I was at the World Series where Reggie, Reggie Jackson did that. Oh, you were. Yeah, the other two were George Brett, who I saw in to- No, I'm sorry. Mike Stanley, who was a backup catcher, hit three home runs in a game. And I think the other one was... Uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, George Brett hit three in a uh, uh, 78 uh, championship series game. They were all solo, and the Yankees won the game when Munson hit one in the eighth inning. Yeah, and the Henry. one Stanley, uh, the the they're playing the Indians and the, the Yankees blew a five run lead in the ninth inning, and they wound up losing that game. Huh? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. No, it's yeah, it's amazing how you know, and with the influx of home runs, that feats that used to really you know be memorable and you know really stuck out and. You know, kids would file them away for future reference, and always be able to go back and say, "Yeah, I remember. The, I know about that game, that game, that game, that game." Now the four home run game list would—I don't know how long it is, but I don't, I'd be very few fans. I think they could. I know, yeah. Everybody on it, you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to be, you know, go. 
after. And, and they also yeah. saw three cycles, and two of them yeah. were also the the player who hit for a cycle was on the losing team. I saw yeah. George Brett in Toronto. I saw Manny Fernandez, not Manny, Tony Fernandez up at Yankee Stadium. And I saw Gary Reedus. Uh, uh, he's playing the Pirates, do it in Cincinnati. Uh, <laughs> there's a bit of a funny story. Uh, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. The only ones I really like for baseball is, is Jim Haller. So he puts up pirate trivia, and he one of the, one of the one day he put up who at the last inside the park Grand Slam home run in pirate history. So I put down Frankie Tavares, you know, which was the answer. He said, yeah. "How the hell do you know that?" And I said, "I was there." That's, he did that's in right. Cincinnati. You were you were there for Reba, and you were there for Reba, yeah, and you were yeah, there and. For uh, I've seen a couple of them inside, of inside the park ran some warm runs. I saw Terry, a, I've never seen I've never seen them. I've, I've seen, seen I saw one. Terry Pendleton with the Cardinals. He got one when the two two men outfielders crashed into each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and the, what Tavares did, he shot a ball right down the line, bases loaded, two outs, and it went past the past first base. And it caromed off the wall in right field, uh, not in the way that uh, Ken Griffey Sr. expected it. So there's two outs that were all running like crazy. And uh, he got it. But I told Jim, uh, I said, there's no way in hell that I would have ever known that if I wasn't there. No. 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 <laughs> so. Uh, Tavares, Tavares yeah. the right-handed hitter, too. So, he yeah. Was, yeah, that, yeah, that would make it even more. Bizarre. So uh, now you know I have anything to do with the trivia. When I go to the same yeah. conventions and they ask me why I don't play, I said I'm not going to be Bahala Muhammad Ali like he was yeah. at the end of his yeah. career game beaten by uh, bums. I said I can't. I just don't. Have, I don't have the need for it anymore. Yeah, I I still love it, but I yeah. You know, I, but what what makes it no what makes it not nearly as much fun is it's so much available online now. You can you don't even have to know a whole lot about baseball. You just have to know how to play around in baseball ref sites, and you can find out almost anything, any yeah. record or any any group of players who've done something special. And uh, there's no real research involved, no no thrill of finding something on your own, uh, and uh, it's. It's it's spoiled trivia for me too. It's no longer nearly as much fun as it used to be. You know, when you and I and others would get together with a, a yeah. McMillan and, and we, you know, pl- we play plug in, and, yeah. You know, give a guy's career who, you know, played in the twenties and thirties, and, and just sketch it in and you know see who could get it. And you know, and there were a lot, certainly a lot of guys around then who did. And I don't know that you'd find those guys anymore. With you know. And, and playing in trivia because most of them, I don't, I don't, you know, the trivia, the questions are based on more modern stuff. And yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's mostly post expansion and even post twenty first century. So well, when I was, uh, 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 they had, uh, I on this horse side trivia and was just produced by uh, saber people, and uh, you know, it, you can never. Co- Come in first because it go, it goes online later than they're taking calls or texts or whatever. And yeah. uh, they had one uh, uh, the other day, and they have a theme for the week. And they're they're so desperate for themes that the one they had last week was players who that tennis player from the fifties, Gussie Moran. Picked us more more handsome, most handsome. How the hell did anybody know that? Uh, guess what? Guess what? Moran did what? Picked these players as the most handsome. Oh, Gussie Moran picked players yeah. as the most handsome. Yeah, because I remember you who who Gussie Moran picked. Yeah, <laughs> that was the theme. That's, that's all the answers were. Absurd. I know on players. That's the. <laughs> Yeah, they did six or seven questions 
on players, and then they put the theme down. You know, once in a while, I can get the theme. But uh, that, you, I couldn't believe they used something like that. Who'd she pick, Jungle Jim Rivera? No, yeah. she picked the, the oh, oh, one of the first ones was Bobby Avila. Bobby, well, Avila was good looking. But yeah, that, but I mean, God, I remember no. reading that in an old sport magazine, you know, yeah. 55 oh, years man. ago, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, Betsy that, Moran that's was famous for wearing for wearing uh, short dresses or something or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. And, uh, yeah, she but was can you imagine that as a theme? Uh, you know, you yeah, know, you, you I mean, or I tried that in a trivia contest. They I know throw, we, they throw we, stuff we, at us. Yeah. They would, they would, they probably would have hooked you off the stage right away. I know. Yeah. So anyway, my, my example of uh, uh, not knowing the current stuff is that I was once asked. Uh, who was the uh, who has the record home uh, RBIs for Baltimore Orioles in a season? So I said Jim Jim Gentile in 1961, he had 141. That's and, what I would guess. Yeah, it was Manuel Tejada in 2007. He had more than I 141. Had, yeah, I have no clue. I have no clue about that. No, no, I don't know how you would. No. Like I think everything before, uh, let's say, uh, the early 2000s, uh, after the early 2000s, is a blank to me. Yeah, yeah I know. Either the seasons blend together, the teams, you know, it's yeah, it's all. Yeah, and now, yeah, the, yeah the, uh, used, it used to be, I mean, I sound like a, an old man, which I am at this point, that uh, there used to be uh, players uh, before free agency. Uh, that they would stay for a, to a team nine, ten years, and you get to you know know all about them. And uh, if you're bought, buying the baseball cards back then, you even know more about them. Well, I haven't bought baseball cards in a lot of years, except for yeah. the heritage sets that they put out, pops put out because I like the design. But uh, you know, no know, knowing about that, I mean, God, there's so many players that. Uh, uh, Jump around. Yeah. It was a, such a shortage. Yeah, I, I, that's why when you know you said you only know four or five Marlins. I mean, I, I you know, I the Marlins. I would say would you know, I would think of guys that have probably been gone for already four or five years, and that's you know, going elsewhere. And I, you know, it's it's that way with almost every team. You know, ask me to name four, five Detroit Tigers, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd be up all night trying to figure it. Yeah. But the ones I really didn't, I don't know the age very well, but the two I no. really don't know very well were uh, uh, the Angels, uh, the three of them, Angels, the Rockies, and especially the Diamondbacks. Oh, the Diamondbacks. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, and the only reason I know uh, a little bit about the Rockies is because all the hitting uh, goes on in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, the thirty teams now too. We only yeah. we only had sixteen, 16 teams yeah. in the fifties, and it uh, you know it trivia then it was really intense. I mean, you could get down to the guys who were you know, only played like forty games in a season or thirty games and did something special, or uh, only came only had two or three seasons of careers, and we knew them. We knew who they were, but now, I mean. There's such a big, there's such a flood. I don't know how many, how many ball players this year in a 60 game season made their debut. I, I think it's probably upwards of 300. Yeah, it's they... crazy. It's crazy that they weren't even, you know, uh, you know, there were only 400, like 400 players in each league, uh, both leagues combined in, in the 50s. Yeah, and the thing uh, is, all, the thing is also is that uh, uh, you see something like. Uh, Edwin Jackson, who has one of the worst percentages ever by a pitcher that won 100 games or more. And he has set the record last year when he played for his 14th team. I looked this up on reference because while I'm doing profiles, I, I, I go back and forth between reference to make sure I, got, I have everything straight. What, what are you doing for I do it for Jim Howell's groups. I did one of the oh, Robert okay. Roberts today. 
I did one on uh, a couple of days ago on, uh, was it, uh, it was uh, some, some outfield, I don't know, yeah, I put down stuff, you know, by Jim Greengrass, you know, the, the, even these type of players that only were around for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Green Gas got shorter. I think he had yeah, diabetes. For bias. For bias. For bias. Yeah. yeah, I know he had some clotting problem. Yeah, I remember that. And he made it to yeah. look like 91 and 92. And, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. And I put down, if it's appropriate, in Jim's groups only because uh, I started doing this in a couple other groups. And I was asked to stop, so I stopped uh, what card number they were on the 52 top set. Huh. Yeah, because yeah. I had that memorized. I mean, I have to look that up. And yeah, I just, I just, I just pulled up Edwin Jackson, and I have to admit that he made over ninety two. This, this is an unbelievable career. This is an unbelievable career. You know, he look at what he got I, paid. Going out to the bottom of the page, look what he. I'm got afraid to look. Ninety two. I think it was ninety two million. What? Yeah. The Cubs and their um, genius uh, at the genius point gave them a four-year, uh, fifty-two mil contract, which was which he did nothing to earn. And the Giants cut uh, the other one of my favorites, Jeff Samarja, who was wasn't worth the paper. Uh, the Giants paid paid him, uh, I think, sixty-four for four. Yeah, you're right. Oh my God. Jackson in 2020 was getting 18 million five. He had a contract with the Cardinal. I guess I, I, what happened? They dumped him and they went. I guess so. Yeah. Diamondbacks. Yeah. How could they? How could that possibly be? I mean, there's only one expression. Yeah. Because the owners are idiots, and they've got very good agents. These players. Yeah, I, I guess. Jeez. Yeah, me, my, one of my friends and I, who, this friend of mine is a very passionate Yankee fan. We, we, we're creating the Jacoby Ellsbury Award for the Yankee player that spends the most time on the uh, disabled list. <laughs> is he now, still active? Is he still considered to be active? or is he uh, now? Well, there was a big dispute about paying him this year. He hasn't played a game since, I think, 2017. And uh, because he, the Yankees claim that he went to some uh, unapproved doctor. So he, they said, uh, you know, saying because of that, that his, his uh, uh, contract should be voided. Yeah. But he hasn't played wow. in the game in like three, four years already. You know, uh, you know what career record he held at least three the time that's not during the time he was active. Very bizarre. He held the record for most uh, reaching base and catchers interference. And uh, he was in Bale, better be, than Dale he, Barra at that? Uh, yeah, he was better than Dale Barra. Wow. And it's supposed to be broken because Tommy De La Stella now is, uh, or whatever his name is, is, is bearing down on the record. And he's only been active for like four or five seasons, but he's. Uh, I don't know what he did this year, but uh, the last prior to then, he had, he yeah, had was a couple the, of big seasons. You know, I think uh, the catcher was setting the all-time record for uh, committing inter- interferences. Uh, the Yankees pride enjoyed Gary Sanchez, who yeah, uh, yeah. had 147, uh, got 23 hits, and struck out 64 times. And, oh, yeah. and 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 yeah. Boone is an article in the paper. Boone is still backing him. He won't. Yeah. He doesn't catch Cole because uh, Cole can't stand pitching to him. Yeah. And and the the guy as a sure doesn't give anything. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll yeah. pick this up next time. Yeah. Yeah. I just leave you with one more thought. Okay. There's one more in- interesting. You know. I think Carlos Santana led the majors this year in walks. Uh, oh, wow. 49, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and he batted 199. 
Well, I, I don't think you're going to – I think you're going to have trouble finding some uh, somebody back below the Mendoza line to lead the, the league in walks. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy in the 18, in the uh, 18th century, Yank Robinson, who used to rank, walk a ton of times, and he couldn't hit at all. Uh, nobody really knows how he got so many walks because – he was playing in seasons where he needed like six balls to walk, seven balls to walk. Yeah. And uh, but nevertheless, uh, bunt, uh, anything bunted to foul or hit foul wasn't a strike. So I think between that and just yeah. you know wearing down pitchers, that's how he got his walks. But nobody since has done anything on the level of Santana. Oh and wow! It's it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and of course he went hitless in the postseason. So it, yeah. And uh, but you probably get eighteen mil next year from somebody too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought he. All was right, the... we got. It's... All right. Yeah, this this has been fun. It really been fun talking. With okay, you. It's, it's always fun for me. Yeah, I appreciate too. it very I much, you. and I appreciate your friendship very much. That, absolutely, you too. Um, okay. We'll so do it again. Have Alan, and uh, we'll, will. maybe we'll pick this up next week. Thanks, Al. Okay, you. Thank you. Bye, bye. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.